he rants, he raves, and he's bloody hilarious. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Sean Locke moments. Is that noise? Is it noise, Jimmy? Will you say something, you f***ing robot? Before we begin, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're staging a raucous run-through of Sean Locke's standout skits, sketches, and stand-up routines. Number 10, Larry the Alter Ego, The Saturday Night Show. There's a part of me I describe as, I call him Larry, and he wants to go out after a show. Uh -huh. Sean can often seem just slightly unhinged, given his reputation for deadpan dark humour. But here he reveals that it might not be all his own fault. OK, Larry, we'll go back to the hotel, but before we go to the bar, let's just have a bath. Speaking on Irish TV's The Saturday Night Show, Locke lets loose a secret side to his personality, an alter ego christened Larry. Larry, Larry's, um, Larry wins far too often. <laughs> <laughs> a cognitive creation who's to blame for a series of bad choices, Larry's impulses often override common sense. And then when I finally got through the, the mini bar, she says, any films? Any films? I went, yeah, there was a couple of films. I didn't really watch them. <laughs> And that was a Larry, that was a Larry victory. Number nine, the ranting contest, a league of their own. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. On my marks, unleash hell. What? Oh, hang on, I've got to move. <laughs> Sean has shared plenty of screen time with James Corden, and big fat quiz fans will remember with fondness when the pair teamed up in 2008. Do we look like complete and utter lunatics that we lost all connection with our cerebral cortex? So, when Sean graced the league of their own in 2014, James hot-seated his mate, challenging him to rant his way through a series of sketchy topics. Imagine damn moronic zit-covered pigs. And Locke didn't disappoint. From football managers to fluffy kittens, he's on top form. Get the furballs, get the furballs, and spit them in the owner's <laughs> eyes. <laughs> Sean Locke, everybody! <laughs> Number eight, slating sci-fi, eight out of ten cats. That face you make, look, I so old to young eyes. No, of course not. Of course, Locke's probably best known as a team captain on Channel 4's topical panel show, eight out of ten cats. Spared on by Jimmy Carr, Sean tackles current affairs and showbiz news with trademark comic ferocity. To King Henry IV! <laughs> <laughs> but sci-fi never seems to stimulate him, particularly Doctor Who. I just know it's not for me. Like, everyone said everyone loves Doctor Who. Well, it got, is it 9 million viewers? That I think 10.2 million viewers. Well, there's 50 million wild people who didn't watch it. Sean refuses to pander to popular opinion during this memorable rant, imagining a TV crossover we'd all like to see. They could cut and paste a couple of pages of Teletubby script in the middle <laughs> of the show and nobody would notice. And then there's the time he and Jason Manford massacred a momentous Star Wars scene. Very funny, it was. Master Yoda, he's Darth Vader, my father. Number seven, roasting Bruce Forsyth, a comedy roast. Sean Locke, everyone. <laughs> While this Channel 4 adaptation of the hit Comedy Central show was widely considered a failure, there were some highlights to be had. Bruce Forsyth bravely stepped forward for a roasting on the first episode, and when Sean Locke took to the stage, he duly delivered. Well, and of course, they say opposites attract, and this is like a dictionary definition. <laughs> Taking aim at Forsyth's age and appearance, he's also uninspired by Bruce's signature act. Bruce has many talents, if you include tap dancing, which I don't. And he has some choice words for his fellow comedians, too. Not least a less than impressed Barry Cryer. You know, that's what happens when Mr. Whippy f***s a gnome. <laughs> Number six, the lucky pen, eight out of ten cats does countdown. Uh, Sean, have you got a mascot? I do have a mascot, Jimmy, yeah, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Cats Does Countdown always opens with the panel pitching an odd or outrageous mascot, and Sean's lucky charms are stranger than most. His past efforts have included a politically infused cheese board and a dead budgie in a drone, but we found his lucky pen funniest of all. An off-the-wall tribute to taxidermists everywhere, he names it Claude and sings us a song. I got it from a very unusual bookies. <laughs> it's all in a day's work for this man. Summertime is my favourite day. <laughs> Number five, the master bluffer, eight out of ten cats. I have thought about going on the X Factor, but the pr problem is all my family are healthy, my dad hasn't been in prison, <laughs> I wasn't bullied. Generally speaking, Sean doesn't seem to have a lot of time for games or gimmicks, despite self-styling himself as the mayor of fun. His thoughts on the X Factor are far from complimentary, and his alternative to the ice bucket challenge was a lot less hygienic. 
However, he's a dab hand at Karis in a box, an 8 out of 10 cats version of Deal or No Deal. Facing off with John Richardson, Sean plays dumb but dupes us all. Does it contain a carrot or not? No. <laughs> Number 4, Hearing Voices, QI. Which of you here has or has ever had or used to have an imaginary friend? A regular on the BBC's quite interesting treasure trove of a trivia show, Sean's sardonic stance never fails to flip the facts around. Yeah, I wanted to be his friend. <laughs> 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 Sad. He just wasn't interested. While Stephen Fry steers his panellists through a perfectly innocent discussion on imaginary friends, Sean soon switches the mood to something more sinister, once again proving his uncanny ability to bewilder even other comedians. I hear voices. Voice up, Do you? <laughs> well, I ignore them and I just carry on killing. <laughs> but then in custom QI style, the conversation quickly turns to Yasser Arafat's love life. The interesting thing I know about him, Yeah. he married a French woman. You wouldn't think that, would you? <laughs> it's, not, it's not beyond the bounds of reason. Number three, criticising the kids, the big fat quiz of the year. Children are idiots, they're stupid. <laughs> they know what they're doing. They're going to pick someone stupid because they're... Uh, it's our idea that kids are really clever. They're not. They're thick as pig shit, children. A supposedly proud father himself, Sean regularly slates his own kids for the sake of a good joke. But this clip sees Locke lambast the children of Mitchell Brook Primary School, and he definitely doesn't appreciate child actors. Amazing! <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I thought they were shit. If I was their drama teacher, I'd be absolutely ashamed. Locke's tirade leaves Davina McCall open mouthed, while James Corden howls in hysterics. <laughs> oh my god! It's the truth! <laughs> Nobody likes oh. the truth! And you'll get no apology from this guy, just a hard hitting, straight to camera critique, urging the Mitchell Brook drama class to choose different careers. <laughs> Hopefully they'll keep this in and these kids will see this and none of them will grow up and try and be an actor because you're not actors, <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Harsh words indeed. I liked it, I thought it was fine. It was Just sweet. F***ing disgrace it was. <laughs> Number two, necessary swearing, live at the Apollo. Last time I had a can of special brew, within ten minutes I was shouting at lollipop ladies. <laughs> you safety bitches! Away from panel shows, Sean's one of Britain's ballsiest stand-up performers. His routines are crammed with cutting sarcasm, prickly punchlines and antsy anecdotes from a man who makes moaning seem second nature. I tell you, the worst thing about kids' parties is when your kids are going to a party is they want to make a card. Oh, Christ, I hate that. Can we make a card? Oh, no. Bollocks. In truth, we might have picked a number of on-the-money jokes, but Sean's impassioned argument for when swearing's acceptable is truly something special. What we've done, he said, we've oversold the flight. He said, we sold too many tickets for the flight, so you're going to have to go on the next flight. And what I said, and these are my exact words, what I said was, I said, what the f***, right? <laughs> Do you think you're doing selling my f***ing ticket? Heaven help anyone who gets in this guy's way when he's angry. I said, there is a need to swear. In fact, it's situations like this that swearing was f***ing invented for. Number one, I won't spit on you. Eight out of ten cats does countdown. <laughs> when a joke leaves Jimmy Carr wiping away the tears, you know it's a hit. We finish with Cats Does Countdown and a legendary exchange between Locke and Miles Yup. Miles is trying to set up a wager and has his eye on the lucky pen from earlier. Sean's not going to risk Claude, but his counter offer catches everyone by surprise. I won't spit on you when we're having sex tonight. <laughs> In fairness, Yup's comeback is brilliant. Good luck trying it without a spit. <laughs> and even after a numbers round, Jimmy just can't keep it together. What I've got to do is try and forget what he said. <laughs> do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.